Hello friends, welcome to my channel All Things Spiritual. In today's video, we would look at a topic on the purpose of my life and if you would watch till the end and if you are mindful enough, you may get a hint as to what your real purpose in life exactly is. So stay tuned and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. When you try to answer the question, you may manage to find an answer, but you may also find it difficult to get rid of the nagging feeling that it may not be the right and perfect answer. However thoughtful and well intended it may be, the response invariably arises in the domain of the mind and ego rather than the soul or the Atman. Therefore it is subject to limitations of your knowledge and awareness and to egoism, desire desire and delusion. If you want to find a genuine answer to this question, you must pay a mindful attention to the world around you and to all things that exist here and learn from your observation, interdependence and interrelations of the whole of existence which are at the crux of it. You are not alone here and you cannot be living alone. Everything in creation is directly or indirectly connected to the rest of creation just like the spokes of a wheel. Your actions affect others just as theirs affect you. Therefore, in every religion, you will find a great emphasis upon the importance of virtuous and responsible living. By non-violence, we mean not hurting or disturbing others and not being disturbed by them as well. It is possible only when you practice virtues such as compassion, truthfulness, etc. It also leads to another important conclusion. Your purpose cannot be separate or disconnected from the rest of the world. If you want to find your true purpose, you must see your own life from a broader perspective of the whole world and see yourself in relation to it. You will find the true answer only when you include others in it and align yourself to the larger aims and interests of the world and all life upon earth. For example, think of the food that we eat. Think of the countless living beings who sacrifice themselves to become part of your eating ritual. Think of countless others who through their own labor and hardships make it available to you even though you may have never met them and perhaps will never know about them. They may have been motivated by their own selfish intentions in supplying the food, but without them, you would not have obtained it. What can you learn from this? What seems to be the highest purpose of all that exists here? Pay attention to the world again. Think of all the life forms from the smallest to the highest. Why are we here? What roles are they playing? Is it just a random play of events? Whom are they serving? Is there any purpose to a tree in the forest other than serving the forest in some useful way? Is there any purpose for a blade of grass or an insect, a bird, a fish, a plant, a shrub or any other being to be a part of the larger system other than being a part of a larger system and doing their part? These questions are important and so are their answers. You may make a difference to the world, but the world does not depend on you. You depend on it. A bird does not know why it is here and why it was born, but it dutifully lives surviving against all odds. She lays her eggs, builds her nest, brings up her little ones with complete dedication. When the little ones are ready to fly, she lets them go without holding on to any grudges. Then one day, after many years serving nature in her own way and producing countless of progeny to ensure the continuity of life on earth, she dies and becomes the food for numerous other creatures. The same pattern is repeated with minor variations by countless other life forms, big and small. They all live, perform their natural functions and die without even knowing that they have filled a place and served a purpose in creation. They do not actively choose that purpose. It is ingrained in their instinct and their limited consciousness so that they can naturally uphold the duty for which they had been brought down to earth. 
This is what all living beings are supposed to do, including humans. They are supposed to be a part of God's symphony. However, we are different species. We do not live by instinct alone, nor can we be bound to particular rules against our will. That choice has been made by each and every one of us. We are also programmed to be distinct and separate and pursue our own goals and interests according to our knowledge, discretion and desires. Therefore, we cannot easily fit into the overall purpose of God's creation, nor do we willingly take up the duties which we were meant to perform. We find a purpose or some purpose according to our own desires and intentions and create our own life stories. In most cases, that purpose always remains selfish, self-centered and egotistical. It is primarily meant to fulfill our own desires and serve our own interests. Any altruistic notion arises only afterwards. If we have have the time and the inclination for it. In choosing our purpose or finding it, we do not go beyond our egoistic thoughts and selfish desires, nor do we think of the larger aims of our existence. We remain constricted and narrow-minded as we try to make the most of our otherwise purposeless lives. It does not matter if in the process we ignore others or hurt them with our actions and intentions. We do not know what seeds we sow and what misery we create for ourselves and others as we selfishly pursue our aims and desires. Man, due to his narrow-minded thinking is therefore unable to even find his purpose on earth. How then would it be possible to find my real purpose? As most of us have the big question as to what we would like to be in the world and what is that purpose that would make us realize that vision of ours that we really wanted to accomplish since we set foot in this world. Many of us roam aimlessly to find such a purpose. In our evolution to be the highest virtuous being, we go through a lot of births and those minuscule births that are mainly part of the broader picture that lead us to emancipation. Those minuscule births have certain seeds in them that would lead us to freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Considering ourselves in such a point in time of one such minuscule birth, how then would it be possible to find my real purpose on earth? Many of you also wouldn't think that there would be something like a purpose. It's like trying to find a soulmate. How many of us find our soulmates? I would say not many. In a similar way, generally it's not possible to find our real purpose as well. I could tell you that your real purpose is towards attainment of God. But you as a viewer of the video would find it mainly contradictory with such a suggestion. We are trapped into earning our wages and that keeps us on the hook of not trying to find our real purpose. The 9 to 5 schedule is a real killer for us to actually find what we are here for. Since our birth, we get conditioned into a life which states that we need to first get good grades at school and then once we are done, then get into college and we end up in a job we would rather not do. And now, this job is your only lifesaver in the sense that it pays your bills. So how is it that you are going to rid yourself of this situation of the bill payment at the end of every month? Is it even possible for me to find the right place for myself in the world? And should it be something more important than just work and pay my bills? It gets tough by the time a person reaches his midlife and then he or she really finds out about the hollow nature of such a situation. He would like to turn back and start over. But the wheels of such a life are already in motion and we just don't want to bail out of such a moving vehicle and meet with a sudden misfortune. Some of us, really speaking, just have dreams of living a lavish life and just hate their present life. The dreams of such a person is to not expend even a single bit of energy by himself and he or she just fantasizes that they would be filthy rich and doesn't have any plans in relation to it. I would say such a person should stick to a 9 to 5 job and not think of such ambitious dreams that would never see the light of day. The Atman, our soul, is our guide through the living world. It knows our destiny and where we are going to end up. The world 
is such a crazy place that you would see a person living beside you get rich overnight and on another day you would see him back to rags so the world has no permanency in itself a plan described here is the plan of the atman only it is not the mind's plan the mind can only derive assumptions as to why this kind of an event happened in such a way the atman has the real code for that event to be executed the atman therefore also has an entire blueprint of each living being as to how he or she would be getting through his or her life unto moksha and then the journey beyond that hence it is definitely true that the atman knows the real purpose of why you are really here but is the atman really interested in the jiva's progress also has the jiva paid any attention through all his life at his or her own atman the jiva whose entire life goes into understanding his surroundings and the world that he lives in that in itself is so comprehensive that the jiva takes several births to understand what's going on in the outer world he or she takes several births in either a royal or sometimes as a commoner to experience duality that it shapes his or her mind in a certain way they view the world a bias therefore is already set in his or her mind about the world and due to this bias he fails to find his or her purpose on earth a purpose therefore could be anything like teaching or mentoring someone or maybe helping the poor and i wouldn't want to leave out bringing up your own business definitely if you think so you should go for it there is a very good feeling of fulfillment about yourself if you are able to establish a business of your own and bring it to fruition am i the right person to run this business will the business stay up what if i face challenges after opening the business and what if i have the fear that would close down my business will i be able to make it the first step therefore for a person with so much interest in finding his purpose in the world is to therefore calm your mind and make your state peaceful a mind full of such incessant thoughts is full of questions too and it doesn't receive any answers to the question like am i going to be able to sustain a business of my own and also a calm mind is open to being creative in itself just like a business like uber is a taxi business that doesn't have any of its own cars alibaba a valuable retailer doesn't own any inventory airbnb doesn't own any real estate such kind of ideas come to creative minds and they don't come to my minds that have endless thoughts of their own the mind should therefore in order to start getting creative at least have some space in itself to have a real room for such creative ideas well i want to make a million dollars but i have no idea how to go about it well then the first step would be to at least search through your own mind through the endless forests of thoughts a place for peace and quietude to find what you really like to do what is that one thing that you could do that wouldn't be routine and would bring a sense of completeness within yourself i bet you that many don't even know the answer to this all our goals are generally right to a monetary result as krishna says in the bhagavad gita karmanya vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phala hetur bhur mate sangotsva karmani you have every right to work but not expecting the fruits out of it let the focus not be on the fruits and never be inactive this may be a little tough to understand as to what krishna was trying to mean not to expect any end result then how would i be motivating myself to do anything how without any light at the end of the tunnel would i be able to expect myself to do anything for nothing in return to understand this further let's try to reverse translate this if what you are going to expect is the fruit when you start out at the action on a particular task for example if you start out with a monetary figure at the very get go your goal itself gets destroyed the meaning of your purpose therefore in itself has been destroyed by you only 
An example of the monetary figure is something that is needed for a person to show his or her place in society. Society dictates that this person has a lot of money and therefore he or she then commands respect. In a way, a person who becomes highly affluent is because he or she set an example of how they found a certain purpose in a particular area of their life and then they were never motivated by money or the final result associated with it. Hence their intent to the end result was pure from the get go. Money then came in only as a byproduct of their intent. The main reason why they could weather the winds of pressure at their business was that single factor that said within them, despite all odds, I could do this thing. Maybe they saw others and got that confidence or maybe they were aware of their goal from the get go. How as a person then would I be able to find what is the main reason that I am here on earth? The question to be asked before this is that what is that one thing that you would be so fascinated and excited to be doing considering that you won't be looking at the end result of it. As an example, considering that no one would pay you for that one thing that you do. If your answer is something like I would like to sleep or drink alcohol and be merry, then there is absolutely no goal currently you would have in your mind for your progress. But maybe five years down the line, you may find that one thing that would interest you. Some people would find more than one thing in their lives later that they might have to concentrate on to and then life becomes quite fulfilling. As long as there is no reason, monetary or otherwise, for that thing that you found you want to do and you love doing that thing, then the Atman has correctly guided you to your particular station from where your fruitful journey may begin. Most of us may find such stations in some lifetimes. It is not easy for each person to find his or her purpose, but once that is found, come what may, tornadoes or earthquakes, the Jiva is unhinged from his goals and will definitely reach his purpose in his or her lifetime on earth. A calm and peaceful mind therefore is also a precursor to find such a goal. In the calmness and peacefulness, the Atman brings to the Jiva the gift of the purpose of his or her life that he or she has keenly been waiting through all his lifetimes of failures. How did you like the video on the purpose of life on earth? Please do let me know any questions or comments that you may have on this topic and I will see you next week with a new video.